This is the third ring feeder that I put into this garden up at Grassy Bottom. This one is to act as a feature, but it's also to act as a kind of a, a barrier for a Miscanthus lutaria riparius that I'm putting in. But I've had to put in a barrier, a membrane barrier to, to keep it. Well, it's a plastic barrier, this one. Now, let me show you. So what you've got is you've got that, uh, and it runs all the way round. That I've dug in to the ground and it goes down uh, 20 inches because that's the size of the uh, plastic that I bought in. I've got this on the internet and what you do is you simply dig it in, in a circle. Don't try and dig the whole circle out, I didn't. I simply got a spade and I dug round the inside of the ring feeder, used it as a guide, um, and then I set the barrier in pushed it in I didn't want it to go totally underground I want it because I'm going to put more and more soil into this uh, but it is there to stop this grass escaping and hopefully it'll do just that so if you've got some sort of an invasive species of plant don't be put off by the fact that it's uh, Invasive it, it can be controlled. It's easy. You just got to dig some sort of a barrier You can use all sorts of barriers to to keep them at bay. I used for this Miscanthus lutaria riparius If you remember I actually used this This barrel which is going to be used and upcycled for again for something else. I simply dug Chopped holes into the back of it or in the bottom So when it was put into the ground it contained it and it couldn't escape it wouldn't escape through those little holes um, but I wanted something a bit bigger. It wasn't big enough where it was because this is a huge grass that can make 15 to 20 feet and I want it to do that down here. Now it's going to look absolutely great once it sets off. It's down here in the owl border. There we go. Um, there I am, look. Waving to you all. And, uh, yeah. A great way to keep... Uh, Keep things contained so you i didn't really have to put this in this ring feeder this uh, metal thing this feature it didn't need it if all i wanted was to contain it all i would have done was put that in i'd put that barrier in and that'd do it and that would have been fine but i you know i can't i have to be a bit different so i wanted a little bit more than that in so i put the ring feeder in and it looks great it's right next to the owl she sat up there and next to the telegraph poles uh, and this border I do call the owl border but I wanted it to sort of like complement and suit what I've already got going on so it's next to the shack now you just imagine that that grass growing up to 20 foot I think last year I managed to get it up to something like 12 13 foot first year in so it did really well but it will definitely get as high as this owl next year or this year sorry it'll definitely get up to that height so I needed to contain it now I'm hoping to actually simply uh, keep that front section this here this front section here I'm hoping to keep that exactly what it is now I don't want anything else in there I'm gonna clear it it's got some bits and bobs in there um, it escapes me what's in there there's also a Miscanthus giganteus there, which although it's really nice Miscanthus giganteus, because what's going on behind it, it, it could end up being a bit of a mismatch. I've got another grass called Cosmopolitan and another one called Miscanthus cabaret, which are, are variegated forms, which would probably suit it better in this in this area. So what I shall probably do is dig out the, um, in fact, I'll probably put the, the Cosmopolitan, Miscanthus Cosmopolitan, right where you see this little stubby, oh, where's my finger? There you go, look. Right where that section is, I shall use Cosmopolitan, and it's a, it's a kind of a condensatus type grass. That means it's got big, wide leaves. And it'll get to about four or five foot. So, what's that? feeder it's one two foot high so it'll probably get you know three foot higher than that i'm hoping not i'm hoping it'll get to about four so it'll just look nicer but basically it'll get to sort of that size and it'll be really nice as a complement and it'll set it off really well and then once the grass behind it grows that uh, miscanthus lutaria riparis it should look really good so you've got to be thinking on your feet all the time there's always things to do 
In fact, when I film, finish filming this, I shall give that, uh, that other grass a swap over and put, put this one there instead, instead of the Giganteus. Uh, because it is really a nice one. So if you want a really pretty sort of grass uh, that's variegated in, as a Miscanthus, and go for Miscanthus uh, Cosmopolitan. It, it does really well. Cabaret is another good one. Cabaret won't flower for you, so it won't really complement anything going on here. Whereas uh, Cosmopolitan stands a good chance of actually flowering. By that we mean the seed head, of course. Uh, but it should complement the other Miscanthus. But on the whole, I want to keep this section here clear. We've got Cotinus cogigria here, uh, royal purple, I do believe that one is. I don't know because it was here when I got here, but I have done some excessive cutting. Now, last year I chopped it in half, this year I've taken it even further. In fact, I've only just done this less than 20 minutes ago. And what a lovely little uh, rings that that actually has in there as a kind of a inner section. And people don't realize that uh, these things do this. But they do. It's not dying. That's part of its makeup. But it's going to maintain its vigour, if I'm honest. In fact, it's going to uh, it's going to have it's going to maintain its vigour. As in, it's going to get big. It'll grow another four foot this year. That will. It'll send up water shoots. That'll be four foot. Next to it, we've got a berberis, a purple berberis. Don't know what it is, but I've been working on this for the last year and a half, and it's looking good now. So it's starting to complement as well. So when we go back to the ring feeder you know as i said i'm using it as a, a sort of barrier obviously i've had to put the barrier in um, but you could use other things as i've just shown you you get these things that you can get hold of these are water tanks that you could use equally as good you'd have to knock some holes into the bottom of it well there's one there already but you'd need to knock more and more i actually while we're here that's lutaria riparius there that's the thickness of the stem I've got some I'm going to be planting up, and hopefully in time I'll have for sale. Uh, it's pretty hard to get hold of. Um, so, anyway, so but that would have looked just as good in there, but it would never get to be a monster, which is what I want. I want this monster, but I don't want this monster uh, to run off uh, to the bottom end of Lincolnshire, because it will, given a chance. This should contain it. I mean, look at the light at this time of day here is, is really pleasing to me. And this really stands out. So hopefully, given time, that will look absolutely belting. So, there you go. Uh, the barrier. Don't forget, it's as hard or as easy as you want it to be. If all you've got and you can't afford it and you're on a budget and all you can do is um get some plastic bags by all means use plastic bags but double them up if you're going to put them in and make sure they go down at least 20 inches because your plant your invasive plant will escape if it needs to and i don't want it to so that's looking nice and i think uh, i think i've given you a little tour on that one enough now still cold Birds are starting to sing a little bit more now. You probably hear them in the background. We'll end on that. And there it is, next to the shack. Okay, thanks once more for watching my YouTube videos. It'd be great if you tell your mates about it. So, thank you very much. Catch you on the next one. Ta-da!